Hello everyone, welcome to Lush and Salty Aquariums. My name is Stefan. Thank you for supporting the channel. I had been intending not to film this aquarium for at least another week, maybe two, so that it would grow in. If you can recall from a couple weeks back, I basically intimated I was going to redo the scape of this uh, 20 gallon Oase Cinescaper Aquarium because I could no longer see many of the fish, including and mostly because of uh, the green neon tetra. I have 24 of them and I, could, I couldn't even find them when I looked for them with my camera and you can watch that video, it's from a couple weeks ago. The tank was gorgeous. I love the way it looked. Some of you said, whatever you do, do not change this aquarium. But I gave in and I did. And you know, you start with just doing a tweak here, a tweak there, you cut some plants down, then you just pull them out and replant the tops. And then I took out some of the wood because I thought it was creating a wall and the Hygrophilia pinifatata was encompassing the wood, making an impenetrable like thorn bush, pulled all that out, blah, blah, blah. And so what we're looking at now is the 2.0 of this aquarium. And it's not fully 2.0, so let's, let's call it 1.8 because there are some stem plants beyond, behind the uh, dragonstone that are just starting to peep their way up. There's a sessiflora right there, and um, there's some Rotala atrial, which were both from the previous tank, but they were intense, huge, again, I'll use the word impenetrable walls of plants. And so I just cut the very best uh, tops uh, from those uh, two varieties, the Atra and the Sessiflora, and I planted them in the back again, but less stems. And then I rearranged the hardscape uh, used featuring Dragonstone in a kind of like jungle meets Iwagimi uh, type style. So at this point, it's mostly just lush plants but um, in a way there's only the rocks and plants and so that has uh, commonality with the Iwagimi style, if I'm saying that right. Uh, but frankly, the plan worked because what you're looking at now are a lot of fish, right? You can see the gorgeous green neon tetras and now that they've adjusted to this new more open plan, uh, they're out center stage. Now, you know, they're always going to be more reclusive than other tetras and, and, and other uh, more boisterous fish, but this is very satisfactory. And then after an intense amount of research, I decided to add another group of tetras and I chose the gold tetra and you can see some of them uh, right there. There's a couple, there's three, right? And you see that metallic uh, brass gold silver sheen um, very special you know if you tell someone you're buying a fish that's basically just a goldish silver they'll yawn right but you need to uh, re rethink that assessment because these are gorgeous inexpensive fabulous tetras and they get along with everything and I think they also uh, complement uh, the other fish in this aquascape, which is, you know, it's 20 gallons, so it's, it's not really a big aquarium, but I want to have a lot of fish, so you need small fish, and these tetras, like the green neon tetras, are perfect. There's also a small group of rosy tetras, if you can see that one back there, um, and then, of course, the Coriodoras, and there's a chubby autosynclus on the glass there and a mystery snail and nearite snail. I can see everything and you know it's already uh, growing in and being a little scruffy but uh, I'm going to let everything kind of grow, continue to grow uh, as if I had any choice. I mean I suppose I could uh, 
clip this uh, carpet of dwarf sedge and hair grass, and I probably will do that. But I am keeping with cryptocorn uh, species on both sides of the aquarium, the Dragonstone Island, and then I've got pogo stem and octopus in the back left. You can see some of it there. It's growing faster than the other stems. There it is right there. Uh, it's growing faster than the Atra, which I'm gonna now show you. That's the Sessiflora and there's the uh, Atra. You can just see them back there. I've got two rings here so that the light will go through and um, attack those stems so that they'll grow and be vigorous. The pogo stem and octopus uh, is uh, more robust. And so the light coming through this incredible group of frog bit is sufficient for that plant. Now, on that frog bit, the reason I'm putting that in there is, you know, A, it looks pretty cool, but uh, it might not be a permanent resident of this aquarium. I, I have it in there now to, while all the other plants were in disarray, I replanted so many things and pulled so many things. I wanted to continue having um, live plant growth that could pull nutrients from the water column so I wouldn't get a pneumonia spike, um, high nitrates or, and uh, worst of all nitrite. And so I just pulled a bunch of these uh, top water plants from my display tank and put them in here. Now, uh, when the stems come in full flower in the back, I might pull all or some of these, but for the time being, I think it looks pretty cool and I know it's doing uh, a great job for me. Now, by the way, those rings, I found them on eBay there. They're pretty cool. It was, it's, you know, I'm just made by um, a, a printer, one of the, you know, a digital printer, a, a three-dimensional, and, you know, it was like 20 bucks for the two plastic floating rings. And I was happy to give uh, the hobbyist my business. And they really uh, kind of work well. Now, I also switched the outflow pipe uh, to what is called a spin pipe, which mitigates the flow. Remember, I talked about that in the last video. Before, I had a standard lily pipe, and it pushed a lot of water. And that's great on some respects, but it would not allow for this frog bit to grow like that. And moreover, I think it was also contributing to the reticence of my uh, uh, green neons to uh, come out, right? I mean, I was thinking of every possible scenario to get these fish to be more social. And one of my theories was to reduce the flow and these spin pipes are made uh, exactly for that. You know, they're pretty cool. They're beautiful, just as beautiful as a lily pipe. And the water comes out and it spins around in an oval before diffusing out the left and the right. Um, so that's pretty cool. If you haven't seen one of those and you're thinking about options to a typical uh, lily pipe outflow, uh, those are readily available in all the sizes that you might want. Dragonstone, you know, I love it. I, I was sort of hoping or thinking, I don't know, hoping, I was thinking I might try something different, but I had this material on hand, so I went with it. Um, I'm a big fan of Cryptocorn, and it, there was plenty of it already in the tank. I just wanted to move it to uh, primarily to, to the left and the right, as opposed to having it willy-nilly. And then once I trim, uh, this carpeting uh, that the sage and the hair grass, it's pretty sharp looking aquascape. Um, I haven't mentioned, I've encouraged Brucephalandra and uh, different Anubias. There's Anubias Petite and then some Nana. This is all bush along this perimeter here. And it's kind of a neat way to divide the front uh, from the back. Before I had three levels, uh, you know, a foreground, a midground, and a background. I'm still gonna have that. Right now, it just looks like a jungle from this camera angle. But with a little bit of a haircut, you'll see the uh, organized chaos, which is a hallmark of my aquariums. You know, it's chaotic and jungle-esque, but there is some method to the madness. And I do want um, three levels. Big fan of Anubius. And Boucher Philandra, and I'm happy to 
uh, have it in this tank and I hope it does what I want it to do and then some. And then I, I will just keep this orange peak, if you will, uh, free and clear of plants. Now I have one uh, cryptocorn bal balance right here. That's the elegant with uh, just three towering stems that are variegated. Pull that from the display tank and put it there down in front. I think it adds a little bit of uh, elegance to the aquascape. Um, and even some tension because it's sort of in front of something and you know maybe it's competing with the the peak for you know primary what do i look at uh vibes but uh i there's some kind of well again organized chaos these beautiful crypts i wish were a little bit smaller they're just kind of like busting out right there and I could always clip the tallest leaves and who knows, maybe I will. But for now, while things are growing out, uh, I'm just gonna try to leave as much of it as is, especially since my new gold tetras and the green neons and everything else. Ooh, look at the long fin placostomus. Very pretty fish, right? Whee! God, those, those guys are so cool. You know, I know they don't exist, uh, occur like that in the wild, at least not generally uh so a man-made creation uh mixed with god's creation but it's a beautiful outcome i have some of these in a lot of my tanks now and the bristle nose never get too big for a 20 gallon uh, well i shouldn't say never they certainly can but it takes a long long time they're slow growers thank god oh and of course before i sign off there's my honey garami who was happy in the old tank and is happy in the new tank. They're such a happy, normal, regular little fish. They keep to themselves, but they're not uh, lonely or isolated. They, they are just lovely, unique, like a button ear, right? Like a carnation in a suit, those gorgeous um, red and yellow carnation fish. Ta-da, there you are, come on, excellent. Coming right out in front right to the camera, wow. Come out and take your bows. But again, the gold tetras, the green neons, there's the rosy tetras. Very, very happy, so I had to share it with you now. I wanted to wait a week or two for those stems in the back, but here we are, and I thank you for your support, and as always, keep your hands in the tank. Ciao for now.